Well, good morning, everyone. Glad you're here in church Sunday morning. Church is good. We're uh, starting to have church across America. There are those that are trying to stop church. The uh, the whorehouses are open. The gambling casinos are open. The gin mills are open. Every kind of wickedness is open, but uh, and those are all essential, you know. Those are all essential so people can go to hell. That's why the people this run country are want to take us to hell. And uh, but God's people will meet. I see a couple of the very large churches in California. Uh, one that's a, a friend of mine, a big Baptist church. There, they're charging him fifty thousand dollars a service for being open. He's got thousands of people in his church, and another one's got. But anyway. Let me just tell you something, friend. It's a couple of weeks till the election. And uh, this election is not going to save us. I was, just thinking about, I was just thinking about all of the wicked, evil, godless people that are involved in this election. On the Democratic side and on the Republican side. And I was just thinking all about the wicked, evil things of Joe Biden, and I was just thinking about the wicked, evil things about Donald Trump. Oh, you didn't want me to say that, did you? Yeah. Pick the best of the two evils. I picked the one that ain't for killing babies, and I picked the one that believes God, this nation was founded in God, and not trying to turn it into a communist nation, so... That's the way I voted last time. It's what, but there ain't no answer in a couple weeks away election. Revival. We've got to have revival. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked way, then will I hear from heaven. Forgive their sin, heal their land. Where's Donnie? Hey, Donnie, put my sign out there. Stick it out on the road. I won't put it up on the sign. I, I'm, <laughs> my grandson puts his stuff up there for me on the, on the bill. And you know what? Hey, uh, Marky, what I'm going to do, I'm going to flash ever so many things. I'm, I'm going to just put up there big letters. Beto's Tacos. I mean, that just tells you that they're right there. And then a couple things will go by there and say again, Beto's Tacos. Because the city manager called me yesterday. He likes your place. He eats there and everything. City manager says, uh, why don't you get some advertisement? Now, I shouldn't tell you this because you're going to be mad at me. <laughs> you won't be. Mark, you don't get mad at me. He says, you've got to put some advertisement on the sign. I said, I had it up for a whole week. Well, but it's not that conspicuous. What we did is we is we put too many words on one panel, Marquis. There's too much all on that. We got to break that up into a couple, a couple different ones. Like have the address on one and then the times on the other. But then in, in the big letters, Beto's Tacos, and I'll advertise it here. You want to have the best tacos in town? Best tacos in Florida, Beto's Tacos, five twenty one Ridgewood Avenue, Holly Hill. It's a wonderful place. Wonderful atmosphere. Everything about it is wonderful. And the big deal is, the reason they're so good, the tacos are made with love. They're made with love. And that's, that's in that special. <laughs> Marquis, he, I, I can't go over that whole story. Bless his heart. He's part of our church, and he loves the Lord, and bait those tacos. So we're, we're going to get that up there. But I'm going to put, my grandson says, how are you going to do that? I said, we're going to put that on the sign. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way, <laughs> then will I hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sin and heal their land. He says, you can't put that up. I says, I'll put it up four words at a time. If my people, then I hit him again, which are called by my name, hit him again, will humble themselves, seek my face, turn from their wicked way, then will I hear from heaven. Forgive their sin and heal their land. How about it, church? Just you, the good good crowd here today. How, how many of you 
you got some problems and you got some sin in your life you got to get rid of. Come on, let's get your hand up. Come on, yeah. Every, all of us. All of us. All of us. If my people, we're going to pray each evening. This evening, 6 o'clock, we're going to pray for revival. And tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day. What do you mean? Pray, yeah. Prayer changes things. No revival has ever happened. The original wonderful revival on the day of Pentecost never happened unless, what did, what, what, what did Jesus say before he went there? Remember that? Acts 1.8 says, Jesus going to heaven. <laughs> last thing, you know, last statements of people are, 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 very, are, are very important. And, and they listened to it. I know they were, they were uh, talking about uh, the wishes uh, of uh, the uh, Supreme Court justice uh, that died, uh, Ruth Gator Ginsburg. She had some requests, last requests. Whether you agree with them or you don't, I don't know. But people pay attention to last requests before someone dies. I'm, I'm not here to debate what she said or what she asked for or, 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 or whatever. Some of the things she said I agreed with. Some of the things she said I didn't agree with. That's here and there, but last statements are important, aren't they? And, and before our wonderful Savior went to heaven, Acts 1-8, you shall be endued with power. Got to put that one up there too. <laughs> After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, Ye be, she be, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and the uttermost parts of the world. I, Sandra Templeton, I, Sandra, haven't seen you in a long time. Sandra, you need to come back to church. I want, you're watching. I'm glad you're here, but I'm going to see you here next Sunday. Probably was out east or something. Come back. Glad you're back in town. You come to church next Sunday, Sandra. Uh Sandy is her name. We call her Sandy. How many of you like to see Sandy back in church? Everybody, Sandy, everybody in church, raise their hand. Everybody wants to see you again. <laughs> Some of them don't even know who you are, but we want to see you because we want people to come to church. Huh? You got some little dogs. She never brought no dog here. Sandy, no, 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 Sandy, that's over here. It's different, Sandy. She's welcome back, too. She don't come either. She lives right across the street. Sandy and Bill. This is a different Sandy. This is Sandy lives uh, down by the uh, St. Paul's Church. Different Sandy. She drove a car up, a little car. She's probably right in the middle up here. Remember her? Yeah, that's her. Oh, I know. I yeah, you know who you're talking about. That's, she ain't been around. She goes out east a lot. Anyway, we've got to get back to church. We've got to get back to the Bible. I may never get to Isaiah 64. <laughs> Oh, we're gonna get it. we're gonna pray at six o'clock. We're gonna have prayer. Just come and confess our sins. You got any sins to confess? I do. This is my people. Call by my name and humble themselves and pray. Seek my face. Turn from their wicked way. You got some wickedness you need to turn to, huh? Yeah, we all do, don't we, huh? The heart of man is desperately wicked. We come to church and, oh, everything's going fine, preacher. <laughs> I ain't going to be really where I had to go. <laughs> I ain't even going to go there and talk about that because it ain't worth talking about. Oh, my Lord. So, prayer at six every day right here. And we'll know when God is, is working because you're going to see people coming, confessing their sin, and the crowds are going to come. And the Holy Ghost is going to move. And you're going to get the joy of the Lord. How many of you want the joy of the Lord? I do. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I remember Lindsey Terry wrote that. Song leader used to be song leader for Jack Hiles. I remember when he first wrote it years ago in the 80s. 
in the 80s, early 80s. Joy. America's in trouble. God could bring judgment. You know, the book of Isaiah that we, we just finished reading it today. I wish, I wish you'd read the Bible. Dear ones, you know, every day I counsel with people, I talk with people, people call me with their troubles. I'm talking about loved ones, relatives, blood relatives, loved ones, people, neighbors, people from the store, cops, politicians. I talk to a lot of people. I know a lot of people, and, I, and I, I'm old, I know a lot, of, and I talk to a lot of people. I try to help them. I've got to get you to the Bible. I've got to get you to the Bible. I gotta get you the Bible. People tied up with everything else but the Bible. Yeah. Day of Pentecost, that's when the first great revival came. Oh no, no, I take that back. There were some in, in the Old Testament. But the thing great about the book of Acts, chapter two, the day of Pentecost, was the fact that that revival in Acts chapter two was the start of of unlimited revival that is always available to anybody that wants it. Isn't that great? The book of Acts chapter 2, the coming of the Holy Ghost at Pentecost, is for anybody that will pay the price like they did and have revival. I taught a lot of people, they taught uh, uh, the modern day Pentecostal revival, uh, they, 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 they put their uh, and, uh, see, I study. I don't just listen to some kind of a stupid statement on the Internet and say so. I study things. And I studied very carefully the Azuzu Revival. How, how many of you ever heard of the Azuzu Revival? Uh, usually, if you, I'm, I'm surprised Rayleigh don't talk about it out there because he's Pentecostal, tongues talker. Usually the tongues talker... They go back to uh, Azuzu Revival that was in L.A. in Los Angeles. And uh, I'm surprised really don't talk about that. Most Pentecostal people do. And they, 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 they base their roots back to the Azuzu Revival. Well, what happened was, uh, I don't remember his name. I'm, I'm going to read about it today again, refresh it. There was a, there's a black preacher that lived in the South. And... Uh, uh, he, uh, you know how they uh, uh, had all of the segregation and uh, and black folks couldn't go to white church and on and on. Remember how bad that was, and uh, they make a big issue of it today and cause uh, trouble today because of it. That's all in the past, and and it is in the past. I'm mean, I'm just it used to be terrible. It is a terrible thing in America. It's just absolutely terrible. And this this young black preacher. He couldn't go in a white church, and and he had he had to sit out on the on the steps by the side door. And he listened to him. Couldn't go into church, and he listened to him, and they were preaching on the power of the Holy Ghost. Can you imagine a white prejudiced church that wouldn't let black folks in? The preacher was preaching on the power of the Holy Ghost. And the black preacher sitting out on the stairs, out on the side, because they, they probably knew, I don't know if they knew he was out They had it probably known he was out there. But they just had their rules. They wouldn't let him in. And he learned about Acts 1-8, you shall be endued with power. And he, and, 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 and he learned about... Uh, Day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2. And he had a little old ramshackle, run-down church. Uh, I think it was on Azuzu Street, if I'm not mistaken, in L.A. It, well, L.A. has always been a mixed metropolis. It, it was a melting pot of many nations, uh, which it was then. And by the way, uh, they had real Bible tongues at the Azuzu Revival. Like they did on the on on the book of I wasn't even going to talk about this today, but I'm just going to talk about it. Uh, they had uh, <laughs> they 
they had a melting pot because even today, but back in those days when 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 the people were coming in, uh, uh, do you know how everyone came into America back in the old days? Like my mo like my my mother was American, but my father was from Hungary. Uh, do you know how he came into America? Uh, the, the 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 way everybody did on Ellis Island, Ellis Island. Uh, is right next to the uh, the Statue of Liberty, and and that's if 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 you were going to come into America, which the, the vast majority of America are immigrants from other countries, uh, whatever that country may be, and and so we're the we're the melting pot of the world, and 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 they, they came in there, but especially many many of those immigrants went to the large metropolises which was like L.A. and New York City. So there's where you really had them. And, and, and so uh, he had that there, and the Holy Ghost broke loose, loose there. And it lasted for a while. And people were hearing, listen, like the Bible teaches, people were hearing the wonderful works of God in their own language. And this preacher... I don't remember his name. I know he's black because I heard that story from where he got the Holy Ghost and that thing at the white church sitting on stairs. He, they say he didn't, he stayed upstairs mostly and prayed. And when he was praying up there and didn't think God was telling him something wasn't just going away it should downstairs, he'd start stomping on the floor. <laughs> He didn't even preach a lot of the stuff. Just the Holy Ghost was working. Listen, when the Holy Ghost gets a hold of you, you get down here at the old-fashioned altar. You repent. You turn from your wickedness. God will do a, a work of grace in your life. Oh, my Lord. It's coming. I don't care who wins the election. I just want the Holy Ghost power to come. I want revival. I believe with all my heart that God let me be an old man like I am so that I could see Holy Ghost revival come. I believe it with all my heart. Ain't no other reason he left me around here. I mean that with all my heart. I believe that with all my heart. I'm going to pray for it. you to come at 6 tonight. I'm not going to be give you no ear beating or you so I don't like what he says. Don't worry, just talk to God and let's see what he has to say about your sin and mine, huh? <laughs> you don't want to do that, do you? You want to live in your sin. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Cleanse us. Why don't you come get right with God? You don't even have to wait till six tonight. You can do it this morning. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And stay here and pray all day right there at this old fashioned altar. <laughs> God is good. Jesus started the started his public ministry in Luke 4.18. You know, Jesus died when he was 33. He didn't start his ministry till he was 30. And he did all of his ministry from 30 to 33 in the power of the Holy Ghost. In Luke 4.18, when Jesus was baptized and the Holy Spirit filled him, he made a proclamation and he quoted Isaiah 61, 1. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. That's what I'm called to. And to heal the brokenhearted and bring deliverance to the captives. Yeah. That was Jesus' announcement in Luke 4, 18 when he started healing the sick and raising the dead and saving the souls. And he quoted, I, Isaiah, Isaiah's a wonderful, we just got through reading it today. You need to get you a Bible reading chart. I got hundreds of them on the back table. Get it, read it, read it. 
book of Isaiah, 53rd chapter, the most wonderful chapter in the Bible in the Old Testament on the, on the death of Christ. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. <laughs> With his stripes we are healed. Oh, you got to get to know the word of God. must be filled with the Holy Ghost. If ye then, you and I, being evil, you and I being evil, know how to give good gifts to their children, amen, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Ghost to them that ask him? You see, I want it, I want it, I want it, confess your sins and repent. I want it, I want it, I want it, confess your sins and repent. He can't fill a dirty vessel with the Holy Ghost with sin and wickedness. And Don't you need to get cleaned up today out there in Facebook, here in church, on YouTube? Oh, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, help us. Isaiah 64. Love Isaiah. Isaiah 64, 1. Look at it with me. Oh, that thou wouldst rend the heavens, that thou wouldst come down. Come down, Lord. Split them heavens open that the mountains might flow down at thy presence. As when the melting fire burneth, the fire causeth the water to boil, to make thy name known to thine adversaries, to this wicked world that needs to repent and turn to you. Make yourself known to this wicked world so they'll repent. That the nations may tremble at thy presence. Watch you tell people I hear on there. Oh, it's going to be terrible if this president, this candidate wins, and the other ones say, "Oh, it's going to be terrible if that one." No, it's going to be terrible if you don't repent. Yeah. Repent, that the nations may tremble at at the tremble at the presence of God, not at the presence of your candidate. When thou didst tremble things which uh, we looked not for, thou camest down, the mountains flowed down at thy presence. You see, when God's presence comes, you can do nothing but fall on your face prostrate. Confess your sin. Fall on your face prostrate. Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. For since the beginning of the world... Men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, neither hath the eye seen. O God, beside thee, what he hath prepared for him that waiteth for him. You get right with God and call upon God and see what he can do, and, and you're going to have it going on. What you got right now, you got a mess. You, 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 you're you hoping for better, but it don't come because you're living in sin. You must repent. A number of you right here in this auditorium today, you're not saved. You need to repent and have initial salvation to be born again. Yeah, you be born again. Verse 5, Thou meetest him that rejoiceth and worketh righteousness. <laughs> you see, if you repent and turn to God, he'll fill your life with righteousness uh, and you'll be rejoicing. See, I got joy. You can't take it from me. <laughs> Those that remember Thee in thy ways. Remember God. Remember remember God. Amen? Look at who he is. My grandson, he didn't understand. I said, grandson, put out on that. It's out there now. 
In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Genesis 1, 1, the start of the Bible. He says, Grandpa, you got a whole uh, Bible. You got a whole thing. That, that people don't care about that. I said, well, you got to care about that or you can't be saved. If you don't have Genesis 1, 1, you have no God. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. <coughs> what do they teach in our schools? Evolution. How stupid. How ridiculous. How ignorant. How unscientific. <laughs> Just like we're supposed to have these super scientists now that are telling you all about this corona epidemic that they ain't got a clue of what's going on. They tell you one thing one day and another thing the other day, and, and uh, it's a bunch of foolishness. God's always had epidemics like this and brought judgment. It's the judgment of God. Every time you get something that kills folks like that, it's God's judgment. So to, just don't forget that. Are you afraid of God's judgment? Not for a nickel, I don't, I'm not afraid of God's judgment at all. He can take me to heaven anytime he wants. <laughs> don't bother me at all. Devil got no sway on me. Nobody got any sway on me but God. I'm in his hand. I'm in his hand. I'm his. I fear nothing but God. Oh, praise God. Behold, thou art wroth, for we have sinned. Thou art wroth, for we have sinned. God is mad because we have sinned. God is mad. I got a number I could point you out one by one. Here's a bunch of drunks sitting in here right now. You're cursed with it. You're cursed with it. Other preachers have told you you're okay and, well, you're saved. No, the Bible says no drunkard can have eternal life. So, so you think you can keep getting drunk and go to heaven? Uh, the Bible says you can't. He's out. You, no, you don't want to believe it because you want to keep getting drunk. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to believe that. <laughs> God gets man. For we have sinned. In those is continuance, and we shall be saved. Ah, we can be saved. But we are all as an unclean thing. You see, God talks about all of it. This is, this is a real prophet. Not these modern-day Pentecostal prophets that tell you you're going to be healed and be rich. That's all them dummies know how to preach. And you love it. You go there and suck it up. Put your money in the offer and I'll, I'll, God will give it back to you tenfold. If you're not healed, it's because uh, you don't pray enough. God doesn't promise to all. He does. He heals a lot. He healed a lot of time in my life, people I prayed for. But you're going to get sick and die one day, I guarantee you. How, how, come, how come none of these healing preachers uh, ain't living yet? Why did Catherine Coleman, one of their great heroes die in a uh, hospital under a fictitious name, huh? <laughs> you preach that baloney long enough, then you got to go hide when you die. Huh? Yeah. Watch out. Watch out. You're all unclean. And all our, right and all our righteousness are as filthy rags. Let me tell you about how good you are. I hate Pharisees, and God hates Pharisees more than I do. I've had preachers tell me, oh, I don't know how you can pastor the kind of church you do with those people that look down at you. They ain't no better than you. Ain't nobody, ain't, ain't nobody better than anybody else. God died for sinners. We, we, uh, <laughs> it says... All our righteousness, my goodness, is what? Like filthy rags. That's what the Bible says, huh? I just read it here. Six verse, Isaiah 64. And we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. 
They're going to take you away to hell. Your iniquities are going to take you away to hell. Your sex and your alcohol and your lying and your stealing and all of that, they're going to take you away to hell. You better repent. And there is none that calleth upon thy name. None that calleth upon thy name. The world's going to hell. They're riding up and down. I, I, I had to call the city manager Friday. Started bike week. I've, I've fought this in Holly Hill forever. Me and Pastor Pruitt. They got naked women uh, washing motorcycles. That got you. You guys looked. When I said naked women, a bunch of you guys just popped your head up. Where are they? They were out here on the corner, but we shut them down again. <laughs> and they, they used to, uh, it used to be a different name. Might have been Iron Horse or something. It, that, 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 that bar that on 11th, uh, that's on Ridgewood, just the next block from 11th Street over there. Huh? It's Curly's or something now, I think, or what is it? Yeah, yeah, but anyway, they used to have, they had hookers from Molly Brown's that wash motorcycles there, and then they'd, they'd take them to the motel. You, you you know the motel that used to be the Holiday Inn next to, next to there over there? The hookers used to wash your motorcycle, take them over there, and turn their tricks over there. I mean, I know that. <laughs> I got the state's attorney office involved in people I knew there. And, uh, yeah, that's what they did. Anyway, so we, we pretty much had it shut down where they weren't doing it. But here, but, but here we come in this, over in that old, they've been, that bar's been, I don't like any bar, but that bar's kind of been better since they got new ownership over there. They had bikini girls over there. But then on the other one, on, on Walker Street, Chris's Lounge or something, yeah. Get this. They got these women out there washing motorcycles in their pantyhose. Mark, you seen it. Say you drove by there and seen it. Hope you didn't look twice. <laughs> Huh? I said, you know where all the hot spots are. I do, and I close them down. Before I got, before you got here, there was a hooker out here that didn't miss about where your church. Oh, these hookers. Hookers travel around our church all the time. And by the way, they're welcome to come in and get saved, too. Oh, you get saved down the road. Well, no, no, listen. No, listen. Hookers need to get saved. Drunks need to get saved. Everybody, you know. Everybody needs to get saved. That's why we're here. And we, we don't exclude nobody. We don't exclude anybody. But anyway, I called the city manager. He shut it down. They weren't they uh, yesterday. No, no, it wasn't there. Yeah, I'll keep after him. City manager works well. I mean, the, the, the city man, the, the city been good to us. With the taco joint, they've been good to us, haven't they, Marquis? Yeah, City Hall have been treating us good. There's none to call on that name. <coughs> <coughs> they stirreth up himself to take hold of thee. For thou hast hid thy face from us and hast consumed. You see, when, when God sees all these, <coughs> he sees the women on the corner with their pantyhose on and, and trying to turn tricks and, and washing motorcycles and, and he gets sick and it turns his head. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. I'm going to have to, I don't want to, I'm going to have to, but I'm going to have to bring destruction upon America. Queers getting married. <laughs> Babies being killed. They make such a big deal. I see it on television here. But... Oh, coronavirus, two, 200,000 people. Do you know how long it takes in America for two, 200,000 abortions to, 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 to get taken place? Take a guess. Huh? No, two days. Two days you got 200,000. 
And, and we're worried about God's plague killing 200,000 when we're murdering 200,000 babies every two, two days. Wicked abortion. God help us. Thou hast hid thy face from us and hast consumed us because of our iniquities. Say that with me, church. Because of our, because of our let's say it together. Because of our iniquities. I'm included. How about you? Get your hand up. Because of our iniquity. Some of you sleeping. You won't get over this part. <laughs> oh, you weren't sleeping? <laughs> because of our iniquities. He's sick of it. Oh, we brought judgment upon Rome. Oh, we brought judgment upon Babylon. Oh, we brought judgment upon Greece. And on and on and on. He's brought judgment and nations have self-destructed through the ages because of debauchery and drunkenness and immorality. You think all this wicked sex perversion is anything new? They had it 400 years ago. They had it 1,000 years ago. Ain't nothing new under the sun, friend. Verse 8, But now, O Lord, thou art our Father. <laughs> I got heavenly. You got a heavenly father? I got heavenly father. Praise God, I got a heavenly father. We are the clay. Thou art the potter. Oh, mold me. Like the songwriter said, mold me, mend me, make me. Heavenly father, the potter, I'm the clay. You ready to be molded? Better get up here and repent. You ready to be molded? Get up here and repent. And we all are the work of thy hand. Who's, who's are you, uh, whose work are you? The devil's work or God's work? E either, either you're a child of the devil and he's making you what you are and who you are, or you're a child of God and he's making who are you, who you belong to. You, it's in or out. It's one or the other. Either child of God or a child of the devil. You're, we're all a child of, uh, of the devil because we sin, but we can be a child of God by repenting of our sins. Amen. Amen. Be not wroth, very sore, O Lord, neither remember iniquity forever. You know what the Bible says in another verse? God said, your sins, mine, because I'm born again, and your iniquities I will never your sins and your iniquities will I remember no more. Not, you know, sometimes even we as Christians, some have done a bad thing against us here, really bad against us. We have a hard time forgetting them and forgiving it. Don't you? Did you? I've had trouble. I forget. I've gotten rid of all that now, but there's some stuff I carried for a while. I ain't got none of it no more. I, I, I've, I've I got rid of all that. But God don't even remember our sins. He don't know. He, he, he don't know. He just sees me through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Power of his resurrection. Behold, see, we beseech thee. We are all thy people, all that we believe. The holy city are in the wilderness. Zion is a wilderness. Jerusalem. The, now, see, what I'm talking about here. This Zion or this Jerusalem, that's heaven. That's the city four square. The one that's going to come down from heaven, Revelation 21. This earth's going to be burned over. There ain't going to be no more ocean out here. I, I like to ride. I ride often. Almost daily, I'll ride along the ocean and listen to the Bible and watch the ocean and pray. Almost daily, I do that. Take some time to do that. I like to be with God and look at his creation, look at the ocean. Yeah. But when it's burned over, there ain't going to be no ocean there anymore. It's all going to be changed. Everything going to be changed here. And the new Jerusalem, Beulah land. Oh, Beulah land, sweet Beulah land. That's heaven. Our holy and our beautiful house where our Father, praise thee, is burned up with fire and all our pleasant things are laid waste. Wilt thou refrain thyself for these things, O Lord? 
wilt thou hold thy peace and afflict us very sore. So here we close out 64. This short chapter, just 12 verses, but it's good. I loved Isaiah as I read it. You need to read it. Get your Bible chart. But more than that, dear friend, repent today. Let's see revival come. We're going to pray each day at 6 o'clock here. Hope you come. Hope you get right with God this morning here in this church service or at home or wherever you are. Maybe you're in your car. Maybe you, wherever you are. I don't know where you're watching this thing, YouTube or Facebook. Get right with God. Get right with God. Let's pray, Lord. Thank you. What a wonderful Savior. Blessed Heavenly Father sent his precious Son, Jesus Christ, to this earth to shed his blood for sinners like you and I. All of our righteousness is like filthy rags. Thank you, Lord. We've been reminded again in the 64th chapter. Help us, Lord. Lord, God, convict us. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. Help us, Lord. Bring revival. Bring it like you did at the Azuzu revival. Bring it like you did on the day of Pentecost. Did like you, do like you did with Charles Finney and D.L. Moody. And on and on. Revival fires, which thou break through from heaven like it started out this chapter 64. Help us. You're a lost sinner here in the audience. You know you're lost or out on Facebook or YouTube, whatever. Repent. See your wicked heart. Confess. Trust the blood of Christ. Be saved now. Pray this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me. Shed your precious blood. On Calvary's cross, rose to the grave the third day. The best I know how, with an honest heart, turn from my sins, receive you as my Savior. Thank you for saving me right now. Lord, you know the hearts of all those in our auditorium here. I pray those that have been sincere, repenting of sin today, would come down to an old-fashioned altar and kneel. And just do some business with God here personally. Just come, dear one. Maybe you're a sinner, this backslidden Christian that's sinning. You need to get right with God. Anything on your heart, get rid of it. A lost sinner that's trusted Christ, you come. Those out in the listening audience, bow where you are, pull your car over, whatever. Get right with God. Oh, how we need revival. Set our hearts on fire, dear Lord. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.